Welcome to Level Up Mechanics. In today's video, we're going to be doing a rear drum to disc brake conversion on my 8th gen Honda Civic. In addition to the rear disc brake conversion, we'll also be installing some extra goodies along the way to upgrade the rear suspension. So if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. But in the meantime, let's go ahead and jump on in. So here is everything that I'll be installing for my rear disc brake conversion on my 8th gen Civic today. Some of these items are required in order to do the conversion properly. Some of them are optional upgrades that I'm adding while I'm in there doing the upgrades already. All of these items, except for the rear steering knuckles, I purchased off of Amazon. So I'll make sure to provide a link in the description section below in case you are interested in anything you see. The rear steering knuckles, I went ahead and sourced from a junkyard just because it was a far cheaper option than buying brand new rear steering knuckles or rear suspension knuckles for the Civic. As long as you can find rear suspension knuckles off of an EX or an SI, they will be compatible for this disc brake conversion setup. Some of the required parts that you'll need include the rear suspension knuckles. We're going to have our driver side and passenger side parking brake cables for an EX or an SI. Those are required in order to do the conversion properly. And then you will also need rear wheel bearing and hubs from an EX or an SI. In addition, you will need some brake rotors from an EX or an SI. You will also need some brake calipers from an EX or an SI. Same goes for the brake pads. And then over here, you will also need some brake lines from an EX or an SI. I went ahead and upgraded to stainless steel brake lines from StopTech. You'll also need some DOT3 brake fluid. So I went ahead and picked up some Honda Genuine DOT3 brake fluid off of Amazon. Some of the upgrades that I'm performing on the vehicle today include the rotors and the calipers uh, from PowerStop. They come as a kit, which pretty much includes everything that you need as far as the brake rotors and calipers and pads are concerned. So we have the PowerStop brake pads, PowerStop cross-drilled and slotted rotors, and the red powder-coated uh, brake calipers with all of the hardware. You will also need some brake screws for the rotors. These are stainless steel brake screws that I got off of Amazon. And as far as additional upgrades I'll be installing, I went ahead and replaced all of my rubber bushings with polyurethane bushings from Prothane. I purchased the rear suspension Prothane bushing kit off of Amazon and went ahead and pressed out all of the old bushings already and installed the new bushings onto the suspension components for the rear end. I also went ahead and just bought some new wheel bearings and hubs because the ones that were on here originally were from the junkyard and I did not want to guess what the condition was for the wheel bearings and hubs. Uh, I did go ahead and press in some extended wheel studs from Block Racing so that way I could take advantage of the extra length and use my open-ended skunk to lug nuts to use all of the threads to give me that extra security that I need as far as securing the wheel to the vehicle. If there's anything that I missed, I'll make sure to go over it during the course of the video. Uh, but this is pretty much everything that we'll be installing today. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually prep the vehicle in order to access the parking brake cables. In order to do this, I need to remove my center console. There is going to be a retaining clip behind this trim cover right here. So I'm gonna need to pop down this trim cover. Here is the clip on the driver's side. Here is the clip on the passenger side after you pop open the trim cover underneath the glove box. Over here, I will just press down on this collar in order to disconnect the boot from the shift knob. And then I will just remove the shift knob. Here 
is the shift boot. And then here is the trim cover for the shifter assembly. Now that the trim is removed, there's going to be two eight millimeter bolts up front over here by the shifter. And then there are two eight millimeter bolts inside the cubby hole uh, that I'll need to remove afterwards. I should be able to lift the center console up and slide it back slightly to gain access to the cables for the parking brake handle. Here is a quick look at the parking brake cable setup. Don't mind the extra wiring, that's just for my aftermarket subwoofer. If you look back here, off to the left, you will see some body grommets that the cables are guided through. And then over here is where the cables connect to this bracket right here. So you'll just disconnect the cables, disconnect from this bracket right here, and then guide the cables out from underneath the vehicle where those grommets are back there. Next step for the parking brake cables and some prep work, we need to remove this exhaust heat shield right here. This exhaust heat shield is pretty flimsy, so you'll just have a few 10 millimeter bolts in order to remove the heat shield. Then you can sort of bend it out and afterwards you can start removing the bolts for the parking brake cable brackets. I'm gonna have a 10 millimeter bolt right here. Um, probably something over here on the pass or on the driver's side. You may have to drop down this trim piece, which will have probably a couple plastic retaining clips in order to access the bolts on the driver's side. But once we get this exhaust heat shield out of the way, then we can start unbolting the parking brake cable brackets from the body of the vehicle. Um, and then if you look closely, the parking brake cable on the passenger side is right there. And the same goes for the driver's side. All right, now that the heat shield's out of the way, we can start disconnecting the parking brake cable from the body. You're going to have some 12 millimeter bolts connecting the parking brake cable via some brackets. And on the driver's side, you'll probably have to drop this plastic trim cover in order to access the cable bracket bolts on the driver's side. Uh, but after which we can finally be done removing the old parking brake cables and move on to the next step. All right, so now that we have the parking brake cables disconnected from underneath the vehicle, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this 12 millimeter bolt right here. I'm going to leave the cable attached because I'm gonna take it all out as one assembly. Um, and so I'm gonna remove this bolt. And then back here, we have our ABS wheel speed sensor. I'm gonna disconnect this connector and then unbolt the speed sensor, which is a 10 millimeter bolt back here. So unbolt this wheel speed sensor. And then afterwards, I will start taking out the suspension bolts. We're gonna have a 14 millimeter bolt right here. And then we're going to have a 17 millimeter bolt right here. And a 17 millimeter bolt right here. And with this rear bolt, Right here, we are going to make a marking with a permanent marker because this bolt is an eccentric bolt and it adjusts the toe for the rear wheels. So make a marking because when we put this bolt back in, we're going to line that marking back up. Even though the alignment won't be perfect, it'll be close enough to where I can drive my Civic and get it aligned properly. We're gonna leave the parking brake cable connected to the drum and the knuckle. And we're also going to leave the brake hose connected for the time being while we swap in the new parts and set everything up. So then I can swap out the brakes real quick. Alright, as
as you can see, we have the drum brake system setting on a bucket over here off to the side. The reason why is because I don't want to disconnect the brake line until after I've got the new brake set up. So that way the time that the brake lines are open is as small as possible. Um, there are a few tricks in regards to installing the new suspension knuckle. And so what I found from doing the other side is that one, when we have the parking brake cable attached to the new brake caliper, it does not come with a new C-clip and I'll show you once I get that installed. However, I did find that I can use the existing C-clip for the brake line on the rear drum setup and use this C-clip to help secure the parking brake cable. That was the first thing I ran into a problem and then found a solution. Um, the second thing is in regards to actually putting the new rear suspension knuckle into the suspension C-arm. The best way I found is the bottom two uh, bushings for the rear knuckle. You would want to feed into the C-arm from the bottom and going up with some hammer persuasion. So you would put the bushings towards the bottom of the C-arm for both sides, and then you would sort of wiggle up into place. And you would also use a hammer, like a dead blow hammer, and hit from the bottom in order to help persuade getting the rear knuckle into position. The rear suspension knuckle is bolted onto the rear suspension. I have my 17 millimeter eccentric bolt installed over here. My 17 over here and the 14 for the upper control arm over here. Now that everything is secured and in place, I will put on the rotor and the brake caliper. It is good to note that when I got the rear suspension knuckle from the junkyard, I took all of the bolts associated with the rear knuckle uh, with me. So you will need a pair of rear brake caliper bracket bolts, for uh, two for each side, in order to bolt the caliper up onto the rear knuckle. Um, I didn't mention this earlier, I completely forgot but you will absolutely need the rear brake caliper bracket bolts, two for each side. Let's go ahead and bolt up the rotor and the caliper and get everything in place so we can move on to the brake hose. All right, now that I have the rotor and the caliper in place, I tightened the two 14 millimeter bolts on the back side for the brake caliper bracket. And now I'm ready to connect my brake line. I will be connecting the stainless steel brake hose and I'll connect it to the caliper side first and get everything routed and ready to go for when I'm ready to open the existing brake line right here. Now, as far as the stainless steel option is concerned, you're gonna have a banjo bolt that goes through this, uh, through this end right here. And then you're also going to have a bracket which connects to the back side of the rear suspension knuckle. And I believe that's a 12 millimeter bolt that connects to a bracket on the back side. So I'm gonna get this set up real quick. If you wanna see, 
on the back side over here, you have this bracket and here is the 12 or 14, one of the two, a 12 or 14 millimeter bolt that the brake hose bolts up to via the bracket. As far as the banjo bolt, you're going to have a pair of copper crush washers and this is to keep the banjo bolt from leaking brake fluid. You're going to put one crush washer straight onto the banjo bolt like so. And you're gonna take that banjo bolt and you're going to feed it through this end of the brake hose. And then you're gonna put the other crush washer on the bottom end right here. I know that was a little out of focus, but this is what it looks like. Once you have it set up in this configuration, then you will bolt the banjo bolt onto the back of the brake caliper where this little yellow nipple is. Let me take that out real quick. So what you're going to do with the two crush washers installed, one on top and one on bottom of the banjo fitting, you'll get this guy seated right here into position and just hand tighten to make sure you got the threads in correctly. Once you know it's starting to thread in correctly, you can finish tightening up with a ratchet and a socket. I believe this is a 12 millimeter banjo bolt. So we will tighten this guy up. Now it is time to actually open up the existing brake line and we will use a 10 millimeter line wrench on this nut right here and we'll disconnect the, the brake line from the brake hose completely. Afterwards, we will unbolt the bracket, which is a 12 millimeter bolt right here. It will get a little bit messy, but at which point we're gonna connect the brake line to the new brake hose via the fitting up top right here. It's a 17 millimeter nut, so you'll use a 17 millimeter wrench to hold this in place. Once you're ready to tighten all the way down, we'll thread in the 10 millimeter line nut onto the brake hose, get everything secure, and then hold the brake line in place with a 17 millimeter wrench and uh, tighten it down to close the brake hydraulic system. Now that the stainless steel brake hose is connected to the hard line, you want to make sure that you clean everything off and dry everything off because when it comes time to bleed brakes, we're going to recheck this area uh, to make sure that there are no leaks whatsoever because if we have a leak here, then eventually we can have no brakes at all. So we want to double check or even triple check the two areas where we disconnected brake hydraulic components. So right here where the hard line meets the stainless steel brake hose, we're gonna wanna check towards the end. And over here, again, with the banjo bolt on the back of the brake caliper, we're gonna wanna check there too and make sure that there are no brake fluid leaks in either of these locations. But in the meantime, now that my stainless steel brake line is connected, I can move forward with reinstalling the wheel speed ABS sensor. In order to do that, you just connect the retaining clip right here. And then back here, you're going to have a 10 millimeter bolt. And we will just stick this guy back into place. I may have to walk him in a little. And then we will install the 10 millimeter bolt. Now that everything's pretty much connected over here, we will start routing the new parking brake cable 
from the brake caliper back up to the parking brake assembly up inside the vehicle. And we will start by just clipping on this end of the parking brake cable right here. You will need to feed it through a bracket right here at the bottom of the brake caliper assembly. So the parking brake cable should only go through this bracket in one direction pretty much, but you'll feed it through this bracket right here and then you'll slip this end up onto this hook right here. Afterwards, we'll route the rest of the cable the same direction as the old cable was and then we will connect it to the parking brake handle inside the center console area. All right, now that the parking brake cable is routed underneath the vehicle and back to the center console area, we can now go ahead and install the brake pads for the brake caliper. There's two 12 millimeter bolts for the guide pins or slide pins, whatever you wanna call them. We're gonna remove these two 12 millimeter bolts, move the caliper back, load the brake pads onto the brake caliper bracket, and then reassemble everything. Now it's time to bleed the brakes and I'm going to start by gravity bleeding the brakes. In order to do that, all I'm gonna do is use this brake bleeder bottle that I purchased off of Amazon. And what you'll do is you'll crack this bleeder screw open right here on the back side of the caliper. Uh, you'll have the hose for the brake bleeder bottle connected like so. Take your 10 millimeter wrench, crack it open and just give it a few turns. Now that it's cracked open, we just need to wait for the fluid to find its way down to the bottom of the bottle. It may take a little bit of time since there is quite a bit of air between the uh, hard brake line and the brake caliper itself. So once it starts gravity bleeding, we'll let it gravity bleed for about five minutes We'll do the same procedure on the driver rear side and then afterwards I'm going to get some assistance in finishing bleeding the brakes by having a second person press the brake pedal down while I open up the bleeder screw then close the bleeder screw and have the second person lift up on the brake pedal. In the meantime, while we're gravity bleeding and doing the bleeding procedures for the rear brake calipers, it is definitely important to make sure that you don't see any brake fluid coming out of the banjo bolt fitting right here or right here by the hard brake line. So double or triple check both of these connections, make sure there's no brake fluid leaking from either of these places uh, and you should be good to go. I will need to get an alignment performed after this is completed, uh, but this is pretty much the gist of how you would convert your rear drums to disc brakes on the 8th gen Honda Civic. That's going to do it for this video. As always, if you have any questions, just leave them in the comment section below and I'll respond as soon as I can. Don't forget to like if you found this video helpful and make sure to subscribe if you wanna see future content on the 8th gen Honda Civic. I appreciate your time and I'll see you guys in the next video. Later.